chest pain uh, today uh, we will discuss chest pain beyond myocardial infarction other than myocardial infarction being a cardiologist usually i don't like discuss most of the uh, time cardiologists usually discuss intervention and myocardial infarction but when i uh, read about this uh, topic then i found this it's very useful and yes sometimes we can uh, save our skin also because sometimes uh, we are taking the patient with chest pain coming with acute mitral infarction but he may not be the chest uh, acute mitral infarction he may be having other disease so uh, if we are having suspicion of suspicion of other disease then we can diagnose it and we can give him the proper care and treatment there are many things like uh, in that uh, area of the chest like chest wall lungs are there esophagus is there pericardium is there and of course heart is also there so any organ may be affected when we have chest chest pain uh, uh, among the among the uh, common problem which uh, uh, coming to the emergency patient uh, may be most of the time may be non cardiac but it's very common problem in emergency and there are few uh, changes but we should know uh, few diseases other than myocardial infarction we should know should not miss when we are sitting in emergency or we are diagnosing the patient or treating the patient like other than acute congestion syndrome pulmonary embolism and uh, pulmonary embolism when it's uh, massive or sub massive particularly high risk also have uh, much higher mortality than uh, myocardial infarction or and still angina aortic dissection again is very high risk disease early diagnosis early treatment consider the patient esophageal rupture also pneumothorax and pericardial pericardial is of course not that much high risk but yes we should be able if in case of pericardial is we are giving treatment of a line of myocardial infarction then in that condition we may aggravate the condition like giving the perin blood thinner may increase the pericardial effusion and then Of course, some benign causes are also there. Uh, when a patient of chest pain comes, like musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal pain, esophagitis, bronchitis, and some of nipple surgeries and other non-specific chest pain, like maybe psychological or uh, maybe uh, some sort of neurologic. <laughs> When uh, when patient comes in emergency, the basic uh, things like starts with the history itself. History, ECG, of course. Sometimes I think in emergency that that patient is psychological. Uh, okay, uh, I uh, used to tell him that you don't have cardiac pain. So many times I feel that patient has doubt on me. डॉक्टर साहब आपने इसी तो भी की नहीं सो इसी सी ऑफ कोर्स इवन पेशेंट कम्स लाइक 25 30 ईयर ऑफ एज पेशेंट कम्स इन इसी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रेस इज ऑफ कोर्स वी कांट डू इन इमरजेंसी बट यस वी कैन डू आफ्टर रूलिंग आउट सर्टेन थिंग लाइक कंडीशन ऑफ एसीएस कंडीशन ऑफ पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म कंडीशन ऑफ इसोफेजियल रक्चर इफ वी कैन रूल आउट देन वी कैन डू स्ट्रेस इज of course echo is uh, echo is very important in test when patient comes with emergency like in acute myocardial infarction we can diagnose the airway dysfunction patient with acute pulmonary embolism uh, yes it's very useful in every hour also it's useful in emergency and uh, uh, we can do it very fast so echo is very useful test pain in emergency cases chest x ray is very useful Uh, rule out pneumothorax in aortic dissection also it's very useful when uh, patient came with chest pain in emergency so uh, if we have initial doubt of acs we can go for uh, 
ECG of course is very important. After ECG we can go for biomarkers. If you have still doubt of acute Kondi syndrome. Uh, in acute Kondi syndrome, sometimes ECG is normal, sometimes biomarkers are also normal. Uh, patient may have also googled about the assessment, so he may uh, tell uh, typically about the Levine sense. So I have this kind of pain, this kind of pain on my chest. Uh, if repeatedly you will ask, I have also came across this kind of condition, like young patient coming like 30 years, I don't have doubt of acute condition uh, syndrome, still they uh, are telling a typical chest pain. Then uh, I used to ask, where is the maximum pain? Then he points, usually patient is saying uh, acute condition syndrome, he tells us that I have pain in whole chest. Atypical or non cardiac usually that time point out. It means this, he is pointing towards non cardiac pain. And again, echo is very important and uh, of course for diagnosis as well as for prognosis like patient is having LV dysfunction or normal ejection fraction. For pulmonism, if we have doubt of pulmonary embolism, pulmonary embolism, we also can have ECG changes like what we call typically S1, 2, 3, T3 pattern or right axis deviation or ST depression in anterior leads like few things, uh, R right vertical hypertrophy. Uh, if we have this kind of picture, uh, in ECG, so we can down for acute pulmonary embolism. D dimer is also it's very important in diagnosing the acute pulmonary embolism. And we want to specific, uh, we want to do a specific test or localize the embolic site of embolism. Then CT uh, of thorax or CT of lung is very important. And with CT of thorax, uh, we can diagnose the amount of the embolization, amount of the involvement of the lung, and possibility uh, of treatment like if we have massive or some massive pulmonary embolism so uh, we should go for thrombolysis. Aortic dissection also uh, patient may come with very typical symptom of uh, acute Kondi syndrome also you see changes of uh, interval MI. I also had come across a similar case and uh, mm, yes in this time I took uh, aortic dissection, pain is some sort of piercing and also going to back and some sort of pricking sensation. Aortic dissection, when there is uh, dilatation of mediastinum in uh, ascending aorta site, then yes, we should keep in the mind, the patient might have aortic dissection. If patient is initial aortic dissection, patient having acute condition wrong treatment, changes drastically. So, uh, uh, I uh, keep a routine of doing chest x-ray even before uh, giving heparin or uh, we are planning for thrombolytic or planning for angiography. So, uh, x-ray is very helpful. Sometimes echo is very helpful in diagnosing uh, aortic dissection. Uh, it's an algorithm form, uh, it's the same thing. When we see the sort of uh, uh, general practitioner point of view, so in that condition we should uh, rule out the other conditions also like esophageal, lung condition and also psychosomatic condition. Uh, here we have marble heart score. When point is less than V, if score is less than 2 point, then cardiac is uh, very unlikely, uh, acute condition of is very unlikely. Like age then less than 55 years. Uh, for men and for uh, women it's less than 65 years. History of vascular disease, non-vascular disease like peripheral vascular disease, uh, earlier ECS, earlier PTCA or CABC. And symptoms are induced by exercise, symptoms are not associated with palpitation, 
and patient is having suspicion of heart disease. Score less than two, so very unlikely that patient is having um, heart disease symptoms because of acute foundation problem. So more likely it's a non-cardiac system. And uh, when you see the pneumothorax, the pneumothorax usually occurs uh, unilateral, so very unlikely, unless otherwise uh, bully ruptures and both hands simultaneously or uh, one side went and was twist and patient is symptomatic after uh, pneumothorax in uh, second uh, side also. So I have SAR, pleuritic chest pain, sudden onset, sudden onset, patient having dyspnea, more dyspnea, patient may have tracheal deviation on a uh, chest x-ray if it's unilateral. Pericarditis pain is retrosternal, again it's retrosternal, it's uh, like uh, acute condition syndrome, but it's SAR, stabbing, so more on lying down, it's lying supine, it's more on lying supine, but reduces with a pride and a bit forward bending. You uh, may find so their uh, friction rub patient, you may have pulses, paradoxes, echo is, yes, very formative in this case, like pericardial infusion or some infusion, or maybe in temporary. Pulmonary embolism, pain is almost similar, so patient may have pleuritic pain, like left lateral or right lateral side pain. So usually sudden onset with marked dyspnea, dyspnea may be sometimes prominent, but dyspnea with palpitation sometimes may be prominent. Yeah, echo is very useful, echo is very useful. Uh, next, uh, now CT is uh, more informative. Earlier we had ventilator perfusion skin, now CT is more informative, more specific and it's also available at wide spectrum. Aortic dissection, chest pain is more severe, radiating to back, sudden onset. Patient, if you say uh, aortic dissection, it's uh, involving type A or uh, 1 or 2, then uh, DVK 1 or 2, then it's uh, involving ascending aorta or arch of aorta, then patient may come may come with hypotension. In peripheral aortic dissection, hypertension also is may be there, but yes, may come with hypotension. CT angio, CT is very informative. Of course, uh, ECG, ECO, chest x-ray, they are very useful. Because first of all, yes, they are uh, may be available at same site, like in same hospital. For CT, you uh, may need to send patient to another center or another hospital. So it's so very informative like uh, patient is having uh, visible flame on echo, visible uh, dissection extending into arch or descending aorta or uh, maybe uh, uh, acute onset AR, earlier echo was normal and now patient is having AR then uh, yes we can have suspicion of aortic dissection. Very risky disease, very high risk disease. Very high risk disease, very high mortality. Uh, here, uh, few things like uh, initial patients hearing, we can get a more information. And uh, like uh, we are not uh, pre-minded, like yes, this patient is having ACS, like this patient is not having cardiac pain. So. Uh, other than acute condition syndrome, we should rule out other organic disease like gastrointestinal organic disease, pulmonary disease, other cardiac disease. And like we have discussed, like uh, esophageal diseases, esophageal rapture, if diagnosed early and treated early, aortic dissection diagnosed early, may save life. Uh, yes, here we have some uh, a few cases for the discussion. A patient, 60 year old male uh, with diabetes mellitus, hypertension, came in emergency with one day history of retrospinal chest pain, uh, continue on rest and worsen and on at, at next hours, sudden in the intensity and radiation to the shoulder and neck, worse 
worsening with lying down and with deep breathing. Leave on bending forward. And uh, no history of uh, dyspnea and palpitation. Like on an examination, uh, physical examination appears normal. Family history of CAD is of course present. Laboratory tests, yes, we can also have slight increase in creatinine kinase during uh, pericarditis also because uh, some myocarditis may be there with pericarditis. With serial testing, uh, the rise of the cardiac biomarkers is not that high in pericarditis or myocarditis. Myocarditis is be high but not in that pericarditis. Uh, and also the slope is uh, growing slowly and um, also falling very early. This kind of disease syndrome, sometimes we can, uh, okay, we can take it as acute coronary syndrome. Uh, I also have seen the acute coronary syndrome involving LED with ST elevation anterior rate as well as inferior rate. Sometimes maybe in later rate, like LED with large diagonal I have seen but it's very difficult if we can find ST elevation in most of the area except in an area. So, so very unlikely that this kind of patient as, uh, will be acute coronary syndrome or anterior ST elevation MI or other ST elevation MI. In uh, pericarditis in known to be causing ST elevation other than AVR and maybe uh, depression of PR segment. So, <coughs> some possibilities, yes, we can discuss here like uh, pericarditis seems to be very likely, inferior valve MI is um, very unlikely, maybe uh, anterior with mid LED or distal LED involvement with anterior valve MI may have ST elevation in anterior lead as well as inferior lead. If anterior wall MI with proximal LED then it will have ST depression in inferior lead. Yeah. Iotic dissection, Iotic dissection may have sometimes few changes but Iotic dissection if have ST elevation then it is more likely in inferior lead because usually Iotic dissection if a stands in the Iotic group goes to right for reality. And pulmonary embolism again, pulmonary embolism again, uh, RVH, ASCOM Q3T3 is more likely, right axis deviation. Diagnosis and uh, acute pericarditis. Pericarditis uh, in stage 1 may have ST elevation, gradually ST elevation decreases and ST T segment flattening appears and then in stage 3 T wave inversion appears and then it may come to normal in stage 4 of pericarditis. For pericarditis uh, and we have two criteria, four criteria in that as two criteria should be present to make the diagnosis of pericarditis like chest pain, patient is of course coming to chest pain. If he is having rub, then okay, it's uh, making the diagnosis for pericarditis. If typical is changes, typical means progression is like pericarditis because progression in acute myocardial infarction is a little bit different. And if in patient is having increasing pericardial effusion or uh, persistent or pericardial effusion. Diagnosis again, spain killer, anti-inflammatory, not controlled, then yes, we can go for position also. <coughs> but diagnosis, yes, of course, diagnosis is more important. Uh, treatment, yes, it's more like a simple. Sometimes patient may go, untreated patient may go to constrictive pericarditis, then it involves chronic right-sided failure, congestion of the uh, liver and uh, right-sided organ. So it may leave further complications. So early diagnosis and then treatments very useful can prevent the development of constrictive pericarditis. 
Uh, it's another patient, 42 year old male, uh, having uh, anterior precordial stroke chest pain with tearing sensation for last three days. Mostly patient coming with tearing sensation usually comes within hours or within one day. Uh, so, uh, Intensity is gradually increasing and also uh, uh, patient is denying any symptoms of fever and vaccination. No history suggestive of uh, coronary artery disease. Blood pressure is high and some diastolic murmur is also there. Uh, diastolic murmur suggestive of Aortic regurgitation is there. ST elevation is also there in mainly in the uh, first AVL or also in secondly. Some anti ST elevation is also in the uh, chest case. Chest X ray, uh, very easy to do and uh, like mediastinal widening, so in significant mediastinal widening. Particularly when patients come with severe chest pain, I usually uh, 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 fear of uh, might, he might have some aortic dissection. And uh, uh, three times when patient came with like symptoms, like in emergency, they told me the patient is coming with acute coronary syndrome, and I diagnosed the patient is being aortic dissection. Ascending aorta, it's uh, 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 mediastinum, it's uh, superior mediastinum is dilated, uh, it's so very wide. So, proximal aortic dissection involvement, uh, it's a very likely diagnosis. Uh, like dissection, particularly extending. Acute AR may cause some ECG stages as well as dissection extending into ascending aorta or involving the uh, right coronary artery, origin of the right coronary artery can produce the ECG changes. CT engine, CT image is it's, uh, now uh, gold standard for diagnosing and it's a very high sensitivity and of course very high specificity. Sensitivity is almost 100%. Uh, when uh, if diagnose the IoT dissection early and if we treat dissection early, then only we can save the life of the patient. Ascending aorta dissection. Ascending aorta dissection involving ascending aorta may go up to root. And so, uh, when we classify, so for uh, D baking it's involving ascending aorta, it's D baking type 1. Only ascending aorta, D baking type 2. Only descending aorta, DBK type 3. Uh, I remember my patient, one patient uh, came about uh, 10 pm in the night. An emergency informed me that patient came with ACS uh, with some ST elevation in fear bits. Uh, blood pressure was also, uh, uh, patient was in hypotension, about 90 to 100 systolic. Uh, in, it was 10 pm, so I didn't do echo that time, the room was closed. So I took patient after doing ECG and X-ray, I took patient directly to the angiography room. And I, and I took angiogram, when I put catheter inside, the central aorta, blood pressure, peripheral blood pressure was 100 by 60, and central blood pressure was 200 by 110. Then only, uh, I was uh, aware that it's aortic dissection, it's not other than aortic dissection. I uh, didn't manipulate the catheter much, I took that only that angio, I can uh, take like coronary arteries, non-selective, most of non-selective and I sent same patient to higher center. And patient also operated once and twice, biggest, biggest non-center because we are of course aware of the uh, uh, Gurgaon center. Patient get operated and after operation patient came. And another uh, patient also uh, uh, 
in KMB this CS, I put the catheter, of course this time pressure difference was not that big. I put the catheter, I was uh, just and putting the catheter in IOT group, I gave one injection. So dye was hanging somewhere in the IOT group. So I came to know that it's IOT dissection, not ACS. And I sent patient to the other center of Jaipur and patient died on the same night. And third person also died before the operation. So it's a very high risk condition. Yes, I could save myself by diagnosing. That's a very important nowadays where the medical legal cases are increasing and uh, assault is also and physical handling, man handling is also increasing. So, uh, of course, in the management, uh, elephant trunk operation, uh, revascularization with supraortic branches, like Kevar operation, and another is strength graft. Strength graft is useful when patient is doing small, small segment of dissection like descending aorta or abdominal aorta or thoracic aorta dissection or maybe small ascending aorta dissection. So we can go for the, the strength graft. This is the elephant trunk operation. Now elephant trunk operation is also having strength graft associated with it. So it's, uh, if we can do it timely, can save the patient, of course, still the mortality is very high, may go up to 20%. Okay, uh, another high risk condition like acute esophageal rupture. First, the suspicion of acute esophageal rupture, x ray have some information. If we have doubt, gastroenterologist, like if uh, X-ray uh, with X-ray or if gastroenterologist can plan for a endoscopy like esophageoscopy, then we can take the diagnosis. Otherwise, ultrasound may can give some help. Of course, thoracoscopy we can do thoracoscopic uh, esophageal rupture, uh, esophageal uh, surgery is a procedure of choice in that kind of patient and can save the patient. Of course, non-cardiac chest pain is more common in the emergency, like musculoskeletal, may be pulmonic. Pulmonary like uh, bronchial infection, bronchitis, may have some sort of pneumonia also, chest x-ray again, it's very informative. In musculoskeletal, uh, one is uh, costochondritis also, costochondritis also is not that much uncommon, may present. May be, may be uh, like psychological chest pain and may have uh, like coronary artery disease with slow flow like not easy changes uh, in, in, in the coronary angiogram which may come out as normal but uh, may have slow flow flexities or may have LVH in LVH means left ventricular hypertrophy or uh, ventricular hypertrophy patient may have chest pain may not have acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction but may have chest pain so, uh, in this respect also, ECG, ECO is very informative. We can go for biomarker. Important and uh, 
city NGO, eco city NGO, they are very useful. They can save life. The money is embolism, of course, it uh, can be treated very easily if it's diagnosed early. ECG changes like S1, 2, 3, T3 pattern. And also patient is having right axis deviation, also patient is having S, uh, RVH with T wave inversion in uh, anterior chest things. In echocardiogram, grossly dilated RV, severely hypokinetic RV free mode, RV apex is still contacting and pulmonary artery pressure like PH is only moderate, not severe pulmonary hypertension because when SU pulmonary embolism it causes RV dysfunction and pulmonary artery pressure don't rise that much. Eco, yes, RAR dilated. And also in initial hours, yes, treatment, yes, we can start or also have long window period. So streptokinase, yes, we can give. Uh, if patient is still symptomatic, RV dysfunction is there, in up to 14 days we can give. Initial hours is definitely very useful for the thrombolytics. Streptokinase is most studied, so very useful. Now, uh, the nectar plays also have few studies in pulmonary abolition, it was found useful. And of course, other vital management is also very important. If patient is having a recurrent pulmonary embolism, if we have deep vein thrombosis extending up to common iliac vein up to or IVC, then yes, it's very likely. If patient is having a DVT up to there, then patient is having likely having going to have second episode of pulmonary embolism. And initially patient having massive pulmonary embolism with secondary pneumonia, second episode of pulmonary embolism, patient usually uh, does not survive. So nowadays, yes, I found an intervention here. So we can put IVC filter here and uh, save the patient, we can save the life of the patient, yes, if it will not uh, treat the DVT, it will not treat the uh, pneumonia earlier embolism, but yes, it will save the patient from second embolism episode and save the life. Uh, uh, we had one singular kind of patient, uh, about uh, 40 year lady. Uh, this was pregnant, non-diagnosed 40 year lady, having a full family of three children, and suddenly came with uh, massive DVT. Patient admitted in government hospital somewhere in Azmir. Say came with DVT or during transportation patient had embolism. When we received patient, patient had embolism as well as with extensive DVT up to common area. Pain. We put IVC filter first. We explained their relative IVC filter first and we started on thrombolytic. And uh, uh, the with thrombolytic lady had passive bleeding. Okay, uh, we uh, aborted the baby and ultimately lady was safe and discharged successfully. So it's very life saving. Now, good thing is uh, with this IVC filter that we can remove it. If you want to remove it, we can remove it. And, uh, and patient may live their normal life. Uh, take home message, that's uh, very simple. Most of the time, it's cardiac chest pain. Chest pain is uh, uh, usually most of the condition is benign. But may be having very high risk, like other than myocardial infarction, may have high risk condition like pneumonia, embolism, aortic dissection, esophageal rupture, and acute pneumothorax. So, uh, we should, should keep in the mind other condition also. Thank you. If any question, say it later. What do you like to do for the heart chest pain? What will you like to do for the heart chest pain? Mask I think for heart. Patient is in the jail, 
wants okay. to leave for some days, he will complain of pain in the chest. Okay. There is no psychology. Okay. There is no disease, but it is a fast therapy. He wants to leave from the office. Officer is not giving leave. He wants, he will say, I am having very severe chest pain. What will you like? First of thing, we uh, like organic disease we should rule out like acute condition no? all organic diseases we should rule out. And uh, after this, like, we uh, diagnose that patient is now in, not having cardiac chest pain. Most like condition is esophageal. Like, uh, esophageal condition is more likely than present. Uh, the, in that condition, yes, PPI infusion sometimes required. Is there any single test which will tell that there is a disease? Otherwise, he will make a food. The single test, I can't say single test is not there for this kind of system. Because uh, like every test can help. Uh, yes, sometimes if we found like uh, patient is acute condition, no, then okay, it's acute condition, no, we uh, don't, uh, don't see other condition. But single test, yes, of course, there is no single test to diagnose all kind of chest. Pain. Very nice presentation. I'm neurosurgeon. We usually see DVD in our most of the patients because they will lay they write down on bed uh, for a long time. I want to know what are the indications of IVC filter in DVD patients? IVC, uh, like I told, if patient is having extensive DVD, like extending up to common iliac vein and had episode of hormonal and that condition patient Pulmonary embolism means messy or some messy. We are thinking that patient will not tolerate second episode of pulmonary embolism. Uh, like pa pa uh, patient with RV dysfunction, patient with hypotension, and, uh, and uh, DVT, and of course, uh, so DVT is not decreasing with the possible medical treatment like uh, the heparin or uh, even with thrombolytic. Uh, I, uh, thrombolytic, I think uh, you are not using when you are going for neurosurgery. So, thrombolytic may be contraindicated in this condition. So, pulmonary embolism to prevent second pulmonary illness. Of course, if in one first sitting we see that patient is an extensive pulmonary embolism, we can give profanity for extending up to common area. After putting the IVC filter, yes. can we ambulate the patient? After putting IVC filter, after putting IVC filter in DVD patients, can we allow him or her for mobilize? Mobilize. Yes, we can go. No problem. We can go. Mobilize. Yes, early mobilize is also. We can mobilize just up because we are doing it from femoral root. So after uh, six hours, we can mobilize it. No problem. Thank you.